Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a tutorial today in collaboration with Arta Wigs. For those of you who don't know Arta, they're a leading supplier of wigs for the cosplay community. Um, they have great quality. I've shopped with them for years. But um, as of late, they will be selling a lot of cosplay supplies for crafting. Um, they've already been selling things like Warbla and other things, but now they're expanding into things like resin. And what I'm going to be reviewing today is some UV resin that they will have available on their website. Um, what I like so far about the UV resin is that it's a one-part uh, system. Most resins require um, a two-part system. Sometimes there's math involved um, and different dry times. UV resin takes about three minutes to dry under a UV lamp. Uh, three to five minutes and it's just one part so it's really simple it's really great for beginners that have never really worked with molds or resin casting of any sort it's very simple and straightforward it works great for small pieces that you may need as a cosplayer maybe like gems or beads or little details that would look cool with casted out of resin what I'm gonna be doing today is a um, a casting for a costume I'm going to be wearing at Anime Expo, and that's Rosalina from Mario. I've already created in advance a mold of the piece that, pieces that I'm going to be using, and it's a chest piece and a wand piece. So I already have that ready. You don't necessarily need to make a mold. Um, there's a lot of resources where you can buy molds, like Etsy has a lot of uh, molds available, people that make molds for things that are really useful for cosplayers like gems in particular. A lot of cosplays, especially video game cosplays, require gems. And if you're not skilled at sculpting or mold making, um, Etsy's a really good resource for buying molds. So just to kind of recap, I'm just going to be doing a quick review of the UV resin. I'm not going to go too in depth on mold making or anything. Uh, I really just want to focus on the UV resin. Maybe if there's enough of a demand, I'll make a mold making tutorial, but there really are a lot of resources on YouTube and on the internet. So what I notice about the UV resin is that it's actually great for small or shallow molds. Um, nothing, nothing too large scale. You're actually really quite limited by using the UV lamp. Um, by a UV lamp, it's really small. You can fit about a hand. You usually see these in like nail salons. Um, so you can't really get too extravagant with your mold making, you're very limited, unless you have some kind of fancy UV light rig or something that's not this. It really um, can't handle too thick of a, of a mold. I actually, my mold is actually not very thick, um, but I do have uh, this like thick part and I noticed that um, it wasn't quite drying if I filled the whole mold and then put it under the lamp. Um, the more sh more deep pieces weren't getting cured under the light. So what I had to do to accommodate for that um, is to pour a little bit of the resin, let it dry, a little bit of the resin, let it cure, and until I kept going. So I kind of had to layer it, layer it, layer it on because um, the UV light was not reaching that deep. Which is not a big deal, really. Um, it cures so fast that it wasn't that big of a problem. What I think is great about the UV resin is that, like I said before, a lot of resins are actually a two-part system. The resin and some kind of activator or hardener. Um, if you're lucky enough, you find a one-to-one -one ratio, but there's some resins that are one-to-one-tenth, one-to-one-hundred, and it takes a math. Um, and so what's convenient about the UV resin is that it's just one, one part. Um, again, going back to the two-part systems, you also have a limited window when you start mixing the resin to pour it. You know, a few minutes, maybe up to a half hour before it starts getting hard. Um, the UV resin, that doesn't happen. You can just mix your resin with your pigments or if you're going to add any pigment. And it doesn't cure and it just stays um, fluid. UV resin is just like any other resin. You can put uh, pigments or dyes in it. I use this pigment powder. Um, 
to make my star shapes. So what I'm going to be using is this specific UV resin that you can get at artawigs.com. And some other options you can buy to mix into the resin are pigments, like this is an example of a fine gold pigment. But they have, you know, chunky gold glitters and different things that you can experiment with. Liquid dyes are also an option. This one in particular is blue. So like I said, I'm not really going to go too in-depth on mold making in this specific tutorial, but here's my mold box. I've already glued in my pieces, sealed my box. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Smooth-On Mold Max 30, and it's a two-part silicone, uh, and so I just have to start mixing my silicone and get ready to pour. Make sure you shake your bottle before you pour out your resin. You really don't know how long it's been sitting and it helps mix. You kind of have to guesstimate how much resin you want to put into your mold. Um, there's really no trick to this. Um, when it comes to pouring the pigments, those powders, they look small but they're really potent. And um, you want to start with a small batch and stir it in, see if it's enough, and then add more. If you add less, you can always add more, but you can't go back if you've added too much. The nice thing about the UV resin is you actually have a nice amount of time to um, stir and mix your pigments. Um, you're not limited by having a cure time and having to work within that time. It doesn't cure without the UV light, so you have plenty of time to mix and play around. When you're ready to pour it into your mold, make sure to pour it really slowly. You don't want to get any bubbles when you're casting. Um, and again, if your mold is really thick, you might want to consider doing small layers at a time. Once you've poured your resin, that's pretty much it. You just let it sit under the lamp for about three to five minutes and your casting should be done. It's really quick and really easy. So these are my final pieces. Uh, my pieces were, they ended up being kind of thick, so I did have to do thin layers and then cure the resin and then do another thin layer and then cure the resin. I did about um, three layers each and um, it took almost no time, uh, about 15 minutes each piece, which is pretty low for resin curing. Um, usually resins take anywhere between 10 minutes to 24 hours to cure. Uh, but I really like the outcome. The gold pigment is nice. Um, it's clear, uh, so I'm going to actually end up, when I make my wand, I'm going to add a little LED into the slot that I made, and it should glow really nice. Uh, I really like the end result, and again, I think it's a really good option, for, especially for first-time um, mold makers or resin casters. Uh, it's really easy, self-explanatory. Uh, and almost no effort and it really makes the UV resin really makes casting uh, accessible to regular cosplayers it's no longer um, limited to effects artists and um, special effects people. I hope my tutorial was useful to anyone that was curious about UV resin trying it out or just seeing what it's about I hope it was helpful um, Again, you can buy everything that I mentioned on artawigs.com. I'll provide links below. And uh, I hope to be giving you guys more tutorials soon. I think my next one is going to be on Thibra, if anybody's interested on Thibra versus Warbla. Thanks for watching, guys.